It's a Western Australian institution, heading to the Claremont Showgrounds in the September school holidays for the Perth Royal Show. But it's more than just carnival rides and show bags. You know, the show really begins and ends right here in regional WA. It's actually a showcase of what our local growers and farmers can do right here in this state. Their first class produce opens up a world of possibilities for us in our kitchens at home. The Perth Royal Show has always been the premier event on the Royal Agricultural Society of WA's calendar since the early 1800s. An annual celebration of the value of agriculture and the role it plays in feeding our state. These days, a lot of us live in big towns and cities, so it's easy to lose that connection with where our food comes from. Today, I'm dropping in to see a passionate WA foodie who's walking the talk. She's moved to Denmark in the state's Great Southern to connect more directly with the region's producers. One thing about a country visit, you can't turn up empty-handed. Ooh, what do you have there? Look, on the way down, I stopped off and got some amazing produce for you. Went to Harvey and got some beef, which was great, yeah, and also some Harvey cheese. Beef. Now, the boys went fishing in Mandurah and they uh, caught you some mullet. Oh, so I love mullet. I haven't had mullet for years. Fresh as. Oh, uh, York ice cream and Nakamura chocolates from Frio. Fantastic. So you've made the move down south to Denmark. Yes. How I are you have. liking it? Oh, I absolutely love it. I'm growing my own veg, the hairs on my legs <laughs> when I'm not working. Um, no, just loving it, being amongst some of the finest producers in the state. Speaking of finest producers, I've got a beautiful Mount Barker chicken here. It's actually more local than me. It was born here. All right, what are we doing with it? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a one-pot wonder. So mm. we're going to quarter the chicken. So I start by going straight down the middle of the breastbone cutting through that bone and down that side of the neck. And then you fan her out like so. And then basically, we're going to cut from the tail right through to the neck. It really is a beautiful bird that they produce. Really tender, juicy, and they've got wonderful flavour. That's what I love about living down in this region, because I'm sort of connected to the producers, living in and amongst it. And, you know, I know exactly where all my food comes from. And that's what the Royal Ag Society wants to do as well, to try and reconnect city folk like me with producers and where our food comes from. Absolutely, and I really like that. OK, now we just add a little bit of olive oil into the pot and we're just going to slightly brown the chicken, skin side down. OK, so we've just browned the skin side and now we add all these lovely potatoes that you've chopped up and I just pop them in and around and under the chicken. Two onions and now we add beautiful spices. Coriander, two teaspoons of cumin some turmeric, garlic, some preserved lemon. Then we've got some beautiful thyme, okay, some bay leaves. Do the bay leaves come from your garden? Yes, they do. Cherry boots, olives, bird juice, olive oil, and half a cup of water. Coriander, love it. I use the roots. Why? Why are you using the whole thing? Because the roots have such wonderful kind of earthy, bright flavour, believe it or not. That goes into the pot. And then this goes into the oven for one hour and the smell of it whilst it's cooking is going to drive you crazy. My name is Arnaud Courtin. Here in York, we make a traditional style of ice cream, custard based or egg based. It's uh, highly unusual now. It's definitely not a diet product, but the taste is really, really rich. Because the product gets eaten cold, you have to be generous with the flavours, otherwise they don't come true. So if you make a, a jar of honey ice cream, you have to be generous with the jar. I think if there was a, one ice cream that could represent the state, it would be a jar of ice cream. Everybody loves ice cream. It's not really that hard to sell. Jenny and myself, we're the two people who make the ice cream. We're very critical and we, we assess every batch and we see, yeah, you know, we try to, to stay to the same high standard all the time. If you want to achieve the highest result, you have to take your time. Go Arno! This stuff is amazing. Now, it's not just primary producers that feature at the Perth Royal Show, it's also a showcase for those who take fresh produce and create something really special. 
like our Frenchman creating uniquely West Australian ice cream. Oh, mmm. Now that's a cool story. Oh yeah, and I've got another one for you. It's right over there. How about this? A Japanese chocolatier schooled in the French tradition and fascinated by Australia. Yuki Nakamura has created hands down some of the most delicate local flavour combinations you'll ever taste. These are finger limes and these are quandon. Oh, OK. So what made you think that they would go well together? Well, it's just trial and error. Trial and error. It took two years to complete the whole box of our Australian books. And you can only get these combinations here in WA? That's right. The combinations are amazing. Now, when I get to the chocolates, look at them. They're like beautiful pieces of jewellery. Is it all about the details? It's very important to us to have these details because we eat with our eyes as well as our mouth. Is this a finger lime? Finger lime and coconut. You and me, this is my first finger lime. High five! I'm gonna have another one. How talented is Yuki? And how awesome is it to know that there are people like Yuki and Arno right here in WA making such amazing handcrafted creations? Now, there are foodies, and then there is next level. This is next level. Here's to you, Yuki. Have one. Thank you. N not that one. That's mine. After the break, he's all fired up after seeing Arno and Yuki in action. So Nathan's ready to bake up a storm, and he's learning from the best. Later, we're back in the kitchen with Anna Gare. Yeah, anyway, Polly, I love it. See you at the show. If you're heading to the 2016 IGA Perth Royal Show, don't miss Taste WA at the Claremont Showgrounds. One exhibitor who's always up there in the medal count comes from Harvey. <laughs> I'm in Harvey now and I'm a bit excited. I'm a bit of a cheese fiend. I love the stuff. I reckon it's pretty special that we have traditional cheesemakers here in WA, like Robert St Duke. He and his team crank out around 40 different varieties of cheesy goodness. And today, I've got a front row seat as one of them is being made. Robert, what sort of cheese is this and we're about to we in the cheese making process? This is the OMG cheese, which is a triple cream, very similar to a camembert. We're uh, in the process, we've just made it into a solid block okay. and we're going to cut it, so we put it in and then we open it up and we're looking for it nice and clean in there, which it is. So do you want to continue on and we'll cut it properly Absolutely. to let the liquid come out of the solid? Put your hand in and you can see the curds already. What, what's the good part about it is it's creamy. Beautiful, nice and slow. Right. If we don't separate the curd, what'll actually happen, it'll come back into block form. What we're going to do is start hooping the, off the um, curds into the hoops and we're just draining them. So that will be the actual mould. From here, fine tuning them into cheesy perfection takes time. After being hooped off, they'll be flipped over five times while they sit on these racks, dunked in brine and then sent to the maturation room where they'll be turned every second day for a fortnight. So Robert, that turns into this finished product. That is correct. Yeah, that's the proper shape and everything else, and that's what it'll turn out like. You know what? It has been an absolute pleasure being allowed here to make this cheese with you. More a than privilege. Welcome. Thank you so much. I honestly don't know how Anna Gare is going to make this any better. The one thing I love about the Perth Royal Show is that if you're a bit of a foodie, anyone can get involved. I'm about to meet WA's reigning scone baking champion. A bit excited. Hi, is your mum here? Whoops, my bad. Turns out you don't even need to have finished school to be a big deal at the Perth Royal Show. So, Jane, I was not expecting the best scone baker in the state to be how old? Twelve. Twelve! OK, so you've won three blue ribbons in junior. And senior. And senior? Yes. Oh, are we making those wedding scones today? Yes. And you're going to show me how? Yes. So you have to crack right, the egg. Where do we put that? Just on the floor? <laughs> oh, OK. All right, no worries. OK, and then we have to get the sugar and put one dessert spoon in. Is there a secret ingredient? Yes. Am I going to see the secret ingredient today? <laughs> <laughs> now, what's this doing? It's feeding the egg and the sugar together. And is that going to create egg sugar? Is this the secret ingredient? No. 
Is a secret ingredient in there? Yeah. So I'll wait for you, hey? Oh, thanks. How old are some of the people that you were competing against? It's not over there. Oh, what? Where do I put it? Okay. <laughs> you add your butter to the milk. Now we need to flour the surface. I can't get this out. <laughs> 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 That's all right. It's a really clean house. Then we need to glaze them now. Okay. Well, so just like, that's enough? <laughs> that's too much. Now we have to put them in the oven. If you want to check out the winning dishes at this year's cookery competition, okay. they'll be on display at the Campbell Pavilion from 9am to 7pm every day of the 2016 IGA Perth Royal Show. Oh, now we're at the fun bit, Jane! All right, I'm about to taste the best scone in WA. You need to break it in half. They should break nicely. You put some jam on. Jam. OK, and now you put some cream on. How much cream? Well, as much as you want. Is that too much? <laughs> uh, well, what? maybe. No! Let me taste this. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my god, that's a really good scone. You know what I love about this? I'm not only the best scone in WA with the top scone baker, but I've learned all of the secrets and next year I'm going to smash her. <laughs> Watch your back, James. Oh, you can smell the ocean. You know, this is definitely the best looking mullet I've ever seen. After the break, I'm going to show you how to smoke these bad boys in a wok. Before mining became WA's economic driver, our economy was farm-based. For the team at the Royal Agricultural Society, the Perth Rural Show has always been about celebrating the value of agriculture in our state. So you know what? It's all about you guys. This is the Ferguson Valley at the foot of the rolling hills inland from Bunbury. It's a beautiful spot and you'll find lots of cattle around here that would agree. Kim, look, I'm not saying the beef industry is easy. But would you say that Harvey beef is starting to sell itself just a little bit? Lisa, what I would say is the beef industry is bloody hard, but what's happening now is the brand's been around since 1919, yeah. and people are starting to regain their familiarity with the brand. They want to understand the story about their food. It comes from West Australians, and it's produced for West Australians by West Australians. Kim, the Royal Ag Society are all about putting producers with consumers, getting them to understand each other. You're on board with that, aren't you? Absolutely. The Ag Society are doing a fantastic job of completing that relationship between rural Australia and urban Australia and actually demonstrating to them where their food comes from, how it comes there and why they should be supporting it. We're supporting the Harvey Beef Cattle Lanes at the Royal Show and a whole host of other activities there. So maybe this year, in between your next ride on the wild mouse and chowing down on another toffee apple, always remember where the Perth Royal Show started. The idea of harvesting is something most of us attach to working the land. But early in the morning, teams on fishing boats up and down the WA coast do exactly that, harvesting the state's carefully managed fisheries so that we can enjoy some of the finest seafood on the planet. I'm spending the morning with commercial fishermen Damien and Blair Bell on the Peel Estuary, just south of Mandurah. What a place for an office to come to work each day. Now, Blair and I love it, our family love it. Uh, we've been here now for you know, about 15, 20 years as a family. What are we chasing today, Damo? Sea mullet. So we'll go over here and uh, we fish in about this much water. It's a very oily fish full of omega-3. It's becoming a real good little table fish now. Well, fresh, I reckon it's as good as anything in the sea or estuary. Let's go and get some. The estuary is like glass today, and in order to zero in on a school of mullet, Damien needs the sun to be high in the sky for the best visuals. It's an old school approach, one that means Damien keeps it very civilised hours for a fisherman. Go, 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 go. So Damo, your eyes are everything. Yeah, well, we don't have echo sounders or GPSs. It's the eyes tell us where the fish are, we find them, and we make sure we only take uh, mullet. There's no bycatch. So that all the smaller fish go through the net, 
Tell us about the certification that you've got here in the estuary. So the Marine Stewardship Council gives us an eco accreditation that we can tell the world that what we're doing is sustainable. We're looking after the environment. We're looking after the fish stocks. Here you go, Tom. Have a crack at this one, mate. Have a look at the size there you of go. that guy. What's that way, you reckon, guys? Oh, he's just getting on towards just under a kilo. And, Damo, I believe the, uh, the mullet's going to have a starring role at the Royal Show this year. The WA Food Ambassador, Don Hansey, is going to be cooking it up, I believe, with Manjimup potatoes. So it's going to be there, fresh, local and sustainable for the people to try. Sounds fantastic, guys. But do you know what? There's someone else who's got a different way of preparing the magnificent mullet. Love this fully sustainable mullet. Do you reckon it's underrated? Absolutely. I used to eat mullet a lot as a kid. Yes. And this mullet has been brined. I put it in a brine solution. Hold on, what's brine got to do with anything? What's <laughs> brine? <laughs> a brine solution is a um, combination of salt and water. Some people add sugar and spices, any spices that you like. Okay. I put a uh, third of a cup of salt to two litres of water. And it just does a beautiful thing to the fish. It makes the, the flesh beautiful and moist. I pat it down and then I'm going to smoke it. So Anna, smoking mullet sounds a little bit illegal, very rustic and also complicated. What we're going to do is make our little smoking mix and that's usually out of some wood shavings okay. or a nice smoking mix from your hardware store. And then I use a handful of rice and that will take any moisture that happens in the pan because we want to keep it nice and dry and smoky. A little handful of sugar and that will sort of make it all sort of caramelise and give that, impart that beautiful flavour into the fish. And then I'm putting in three star anise because believe you me, that will penetrate into the fish and just create this amazing flavour. So that goes in, down goes the cake rack. And once it starts smoking, we're gonna pop that fish on. Pop these little darlings straight into the wok. We get the bowl. If you don't have a bowl to fit, maybe some foil. And we just firmly place that down like so. And whilst that's smoking away, we can make a salad. I'm using some beautiful local southwest avocados. I've also got some thinly shaved fennel, some nice mixed greens, some radishes. We grew these radishes. We actually had a bumper crop of beetroots. I'm a bit of a passionate foodie, except I just can't cook like you, that's all. So we're going to start with some lovely greens and then we're just going to layer upon layer all this gorgeous you know what's great the colour ingredient if it's colourful it's usually good for you and it's not just the southwest that has beautiful ingredients we've also got up north I've been up to Kununurra recently lots of beautiful produce coming out of there now all I have to do is flake over the gorgeous succulent juicy smoked fish Drizzle a little bit of olive oil, a bit of raspberry vinegar, and then add a little bit of extra decadence, local decadence, over the moon creme fraiche. The cooking continues after the break. Anna has some brilliant ideas for the goodies I picked up in Harvey that are simple but so creative. And the Royal Ag Society are constantly teaching us about the value of agriculture. And whenever I think about the Perth Royal Show, I think cattle. And whenever I think cattle, I think Harvey Beef. I think about beautiful green pastures and paddocks and happy cows and delicious meat. What are we cooking with a Harvey Beef today? Well, I'm thinking a two minute steak, which we'll rub with some paprika and garlic and stuff. It'll take no time to cook. And we'll whip up a really gorgeous salsa. Let's start with the beef. And what we simply do is we just bash it out and just making it that little bit bigger. Isn't it amazing now how people recognise beef according to where it's from? Absolutely. People want to know where their meat comes from. They want to know that it's been treated well, you know, whether it's grass-fed, grain-fed. And I think that, uh, yeah, that's really important. Doesn't that look insanely good? It looks fantastic. Okay, they're there for you. OK. Now, I'm just going to quickly whip up this little rub. Into a bowl goes three teaspoons of this smoked paprika and just a dash of olive oil there, some garlic, as much as you like. I'm going to pop in about two, two teaspoons. And then if you'd like to have the pleasure of rubbing that all you over You want me to rub this in? Fillets. Is there yeah. an art to the rub? No, just evenly over the meat. I'm going to start on the salsa. Okay. I'm using uh, three different types of herbs. So I've got dill, I've got coriander, mm. and I've got some flat leaf parsley, or Italian parsley as they call it. I'm bunching it up together to slice it nice and finely because I don't want to bruise it and make it go all black. So into a bowl, 
Grows all those lovely, vibrant, fresh herbs. <laughs> so it goes a little bit of garlic as much as you like. I'm using some Spanish onion or purple onion mm -hmm. and about a quarter of a cup. And then capers. I've got some chilli here. I've taken the seeds out because I, I think the chilli, the amount of chilli I've got here, which is about one and a half, will give it quite a bit of heat. And then I'm adding about half a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice from my beautiful lemon trees. And about the same amount of some good old local oil. Pinch of salt. Dash of pepper. And then the trick to this salsa is you really need to stir it and taste it and see if we need to add more oil or more lemon. Beautiful. So I'm just going to have a little taste of that. You can smell that from here. Oh, it's beautiful. You look like you're having too much fun there. <laughs> I think we've got to cook these fillets. In goes the steak. A few minutes each side. Then we're going to pop them onto a platter and drizzle with the gorgeous salsa. Anna, on my visit to Harvey, I absolutely had to stop at Harvey Cheese. I love cheese. And I picked up for you this triple cream camembert. Now, I would eat it just like this, because I love it. But obviously, you're Anna Gare, so what are you going to do with it? Well, it actually <laughs> says on the packet, best yeah. eaten greedily. So yes. we've got to eat the whole lot right. And I just want to do something really quick and fancy. It's a bit of a show-off trick of mine. OK. I let the cheese rest at room temperature just for a little while. Right. You want it still a little bit firm for this. We're going to cut the cheese in half. Mm-hmm, what is she doing? Oh, yeah. Then we're going to put it on a platter um. and make a circle. And then this is where I get to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> a blowtorch. <laughs> I've got some sugar. is just serve that simply with a little bit of rocket. So we'll pop the rocket there on the side so you get that lovely peppery flavour from the rocket. And then we're just going to slice this pear. So we just pop that down like that. And I reckon that's a great little party too. Oh, what do you reckon? Perfect. And uh, not everyone is lucky enough to be cooking in a kitchen with you, but there is this year's IGA Perth Royal Show and the Taste WA Expo. You're absolutely right, Lisa. I mean, there's going to be heaps of chefs there, there's going to be growers, producers, farmers. All the recipes are going to be shared with the crowd. It's just a fantastic opportunity for people to get a little bit more delicious and information about where our food comes from into their lives. Well, it's been fun talking with you, but I'm pregnant and I'm starving. Can we just eat now? With a state as vast as ours, we have an absolute wealth of fresh produce to choose from. And you can be really local with your selections too, like Anna has done with her free-range chicken, which she's sourced just up the road in Mount Barker. For some great ideas in the kitchen, make sure you check out Taste WA at the 2016 IGA Perth Royal Show and be inspired to cook fresh and cook local.